Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Sergeant Richard Lloyd, Public Information Officer for Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. And Jacqueline Kovac, Crime Prevention Coordinator, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Welcome back to the show. We got mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff to talk about. We have um, lots of things to talk about. Let's jump right into the hot topics of yep. what has occurred in the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so first and foremost, we had, um, we had a major traffic accident on Highway 98. And uh, the reason we wanted to talk about this was because obviously the, the traffic was shut down. But what we want people to really think about is alternate routes. Now, the south end of Santa Rosa County can be real tricky because essentially you have one way in, and one way out, and that's either Avalon or 98. So uh, <clears throat> in the event of an emergency, just think about that ahead of time. Now what we do is we try to get that out as soon as possible to the media so everyone's aware of what's going on, but alternate routes in that instance, going through the national seashores, your only alternate route was Avalon. And how I know, unfortunately, is a price of $3 and what is it, 75 cents? 375, now. yeah. Um, we understand that, but it's, I think it's better than being stuck. Yes, definitely. And, you know, we had seen a lot of posts being shared on social media just to help alert other drivers. And we appreciated that because it was helping to get um, the information out to others that may not be fans of our Facebook page. And mm -hmm. we want to encourage you to um, like our page on Facebook. That way you can get that uh, important information when we put it out there. Um, but what we do want to caution people of doing is sharing photos of incidents um, because it can just share information that we may not be ready to release because maybe we are still trying to contact family or um, the investigators are still trying to work the case. And, um, you know, you never want to find out information like that. Um, if it was your family via social media. So we just ask that you um, be a little cautious in the future. Um, use good judgment. Use good judgment, yeah, mm -hmm. especially um, when you're trying to just help out your, your sure. neighbors. Because everyone's so. got a cell phone and they're always right next to you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, of course we want to take a picture and share it, but just, you know, be responsible with what you share on social yeah. media is bottom line. Um, and we did have to close the road for quite some time. Um, and you know, we get this question a lot, is, is who investigates these traffic crashes? Um, first and foremost, it's usually Florida Highway Patrol. The Sheriff's Office will show up just to conduct, um, uh, you know, some traffic control. Mm -hmm. Other than that, this one was in the city, so Gulf Breeze City, uh, they do their own traffic crash investigation. So it was uh, under their purview and we assisted and we try to get the roadways open as fast as we can because we understand. Mm -hmm. And that was a really bad time. That was just before five o'clock rush hour. Right. So we yeah. want to do that and, and get traffic moving. But unfortunately there was a fatality and uh, with every fatality it has to be investigated fully. So that's usually what takes long, a long time. Yeah. So next. Uh, next thing we have unlocked cars. We've had a number of cases in the county, uh, especially in the south end, where yeah. just vehicles have been left unlocked um, and there have been items taken from it. And we just want to encourage everyone, lock your cars, take out any valuables that you have inside. Don't leave guns inside. Don't leave purses inside. Don't leave money, wallets, keys. Don't leave anything inside. Um, and you know, we, we say this all the time and I don't think people realize the consequence of leaving these items in, in the cars because- I, I know where you're going with that. Yes. But before we get off of that, you know, we, we, we always get on our soapbox and say, lock your cars, lock your cars. Locking your car, that is the number one thing. It's, it's the crime where you have 100% the ability to prevent it. Mm -hmm. and. It, People say, well, why am I going to lock my car if they're just going to break the window? Folks, last year there was one instance where a window was broken in a vehicle burglary. And uh, it, it was rather suspicious. It may have not been for that intention. So last year, every single vehicle burglary we had in Santa Rosa County was unlocked cars. So let me give you a little hint. The guys that are stealing, and guys and girls that are going out and stealing, are testing your door. They walk up, they hit the knob. If it's locked, they move on. It's over. It's done. But when you don't lock your car, well, they're going to jump all in it and take everything that you have in there. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a very horrible feeling. Yes, Santa Rosa County is an amazing area to live. It's a very safe area. We enjoy a very low crime rate. But not necessarily are they suspects from Santa Rosa County. And, uh, you know, the, uh, car hopping, as it's called by the kids, mm -hmm. is prevalent throughout the country. It's not just an issue here. So we get these roving gangs that come from different areas. And I, I use the term gang loosely. Um, they come to this area because they know Santa Rosa County is a beautiful place to live 
and they take opportunity in that. And when you feel comfortable and you drop your guard, that's when it's going to happen to you. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, again, I just want to go back to the consequences of this. Uh, just last week, we had an officer in a neighboring state in Mobile, Officer Sean Tudor. Uh, he was uh, killed, and, you know, he, he was killed with a gun that was stolen from an unlocked vehicle. And, you know, it's, it's sad that we are losing an officer um, that was just as young as him and experienced as him, um, but to lose him due to a crime that could have been prevented. Uh, and, and, again, if, if you're a gun owner, believe me, we're all about that. We understand, we, you know, it's a great thing to do and to have uh, for your own safety and for others. But there's also a huge responsibility with having a firearm. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just part of it. And last year in Santa Rosa County, uh, we did recover several of the guns. And in one instance, the gun was stolen twice from the same car. Mm -hmm. I, I can't explain that. And, and you know, we, we told them we recovered it and it was stolen again. So um, lock your cars. I mean, we're going to keep saying that over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, real quick, let's talk about some, uh, um, and, and this has been prevalent on the news, is officer-involved fatalities. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you some statistics already, in the state of Florida, there's been, or I'm sorry, in the United States, there's been nine officer-involved fatalities. Um, the hardest hit was Alabama, and uh, it seems to be prevalent in the southeast. Don't know why, but uh, yeah. we also had, unfortunately, some canines that were killed during the line of duty, and that was over in Minnesota and Texas. Um, 150 last year in 2018, 11 were from Florida. Um, and that was second to uh, the largest, which had 12. So uh, we're very um, unfortunate. Or, I, mean, it's, I, I get sad just thinking about it. It is. It, it, it's very sad. I mean, that's, um, you know, husbands and wives that aren't coming home to, to their families. And, you know, they, they, they know that. I've talked to a number of deputies that work for our agency, and they know that that's a risk, and their families know that that's a risk, but it's not a reality that they ever want to come to terms with. No, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing, and just going to these funerals is just amazing. I mean, it's just the amount of law enforcement officers that, that show up, and, and they say, well, you know, you stick to each other. Well, we understand each other, and it's mm -hmm. very hard to understand what the families are going through, um, and, and it's similar to military. We get that. Um, but in the law enforcement community, we're, we're very close because it's every day that we put on a gun and we put on a badge that we go out. We just don't know what's going to end up happening. Mm -hmm. um, so, Jack, let's go to our first commercial break, yes. and uh, we'll be right back. Because you guys busted me stealing from cars. So how were you getting into these cars? It's easy, man. I just opened the doors. W what do you mean, you just opened the doors? Most of the cars I get into are left unlocked. But what are you looking for when you get into these cars? Cell phones, wallets, guns, purses with money, and even sunglasses. You'd be surprised what people leave in their vehicles. If people would just lock their cars. If people would just lock their cars. This is where I grew up. I know the streets. I know a lot of the people. My father's been a police officer for over 25 years. It's sort of a family business. I feel very safe and proficient with what I have in my belt. I would not hesitate to put my life on the line for somebody else. I feel like the community here is very supportive. I love working in Santa Rosa County, and it is a great place to both live and work. I'm Jillian Fernandez, and I'm proud to be a Santa Rosa County Deputy Sheriff. And welcome back. Yes, we are hiring. We want to mention that. So if you just looked at that video, uh, it's a great thing. If you guys are interested in girls, uh, interested in coming to work at the Sheriff's Office, just go on our website and all the information's on there for you. Um, Deputy Hubbard, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, just want to remind you that we still have tickets available for uh, Deputy Nick Hubbard's uh, gun drawing that will take place on February 14th at 2 p.m. at uh, Gulf Coast Guns and Outdoors. Uh, just a reminder, you do not need to be present to win, but if you are interested in purchasing tickets, you can stop at any of our district offices or our main office in East Milton. You can buy one ticket for $10 or you can get three tickets for $20. Um, it's just a great cause to help out one of our brothers that is uh, batting, battling cancer up at John Hopkins in uh, Maryland and uh, just talked with his wife the other day. You know, they've had some really rough days. Um, but the smile on their little boy's face is really mm -hmm. what's helping getting them through um, and just knowing that they have so much support here in Santa Rosa County and on the Gulf Coast. So uh, we just encourage you, if you can help out, 
please go ahead and buy one or three or more tickets for this event. Absolutely, and it's for a great cause. Nick, got your message this morning, buddy. You hang in there. Yeah. Um, you sent me a Facebook message this morning, so um, best to everything, you know, your family. So um, next thing is the Sheriff's News Conference that we just had the mm -hmm. other day. Want to kind of expand on that a little bit. The premise behind that was a reference to a, a sheriff in uh, Central Florida that had made a comment saying that not all the schools or all the school boards and sheriff's officers are complying to the mandate that every school has to be staffed. So, uh, you know, I worked very closely with the school board when we started this, along with yes. Sheriff Johnson, uh, who spearheaded this not only, it was before the Parkland shooting. Mm -hmm. His premise was to get more school resource officers, and, and this assisted. So we want to let you know that during that press conference, the main uh, subject was our schools are covered. Uh, and in, in the sheriff's words, there's a good guy with a gun in every school. And we have now um, probably about 80 to 90 percent full-time SROs in all the schools. Yes. We have, uh, I think, six open, but they're being staffed right now by deputies that work patrol. Uh, so we have somebody in every single school, and we've also looked at, the, or we have been partnering with the school board, uh, Daniel Hahn, the new school um, security safety director. and safety mm -hmm. director. And, uh, you know, it's great to see the teamwork effort involved. You know, Dan and I, we speak very often. Um, uh, it, it's, it's really a great combination of really interesting folks working together uh, for the school safety and for the children of Santa Rosa mm -hmm. County. And I'm really proud of how well everything's working out. I, I mean, it, it's worked out really great. You know, they keep us in the loop uh, as to what they're looking to do mm -hmm. and, and, and what they need from us as they attempt to do, um, you know, new things and innovative things to keep our kids safe and, and vice versa. You know, if we need something, it's a team effort. And it, it is a team effort. Mm -hmm. You know, if we need something, we go to them. And, um, you know, like I said, or like the sheriff said during his news conference, you know, if it wasn't for the school board, paying for these positions, you know, we probably wouldn't be where you know, we're at. But let, let me add are. something to, the, to the, the beauty of Santa Rosa County is when right after the Parkland shooting, within just a couple of days, Mr. Rosdick and Sheriff Johnson were on the phone together trying to figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to do it before anything came out as far as a mandate. Mm -hmm. uh, we got within a week's period this Speak Out program, which is the anonymous um, school reporting system so you, kids can leave tips. Mm -hmm. We had that in place before anything came out. There was a, um, uh, a meeting that took place between the sheriff's office and the school board to try to figure out best practices and that was within two weeks. And we had everything covered, um, you know, not 100% obviously because we were a work in progress, but I just love the beauty of how the school board and the sheriff's office were working together immediately. There was no delay at all whatsoever. Mm -mm. And uh, we even took comments from, from the public. Uh, there's now a task force that the school board implemented that gets outside folks involved from businesses. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy about that because, you know what, I have stock in the game too. I have a daughter that's mm -hmm. in Santa Rosa Public Schools. Um, all of our, most of our deputies that have kids, they're in Santa Rosa. Yeah. And, you know, we're very well vested in that. And we have some awesome school resource officers. We want to let you know that as well. We really do. I get messages all the time on Facebook from mm -hmm. our parents that have kids in schools. Um, you know, deputy so-and-so, you know, did this mm -hmm. with my kid and we're just so happy. They love going to school to, you know, just to see them. So I love seeing those messages. Like, keep on coming. Yeah. And, and if you have any cool pictures, send them to us through our Facebook page. We love getting pictures and comments about our school resource officers through our Facebook page. And uh, they're, they're doing great. So just to give you an idea how this is working is you have school resource officers are divided into north end, south end. There's a supervisor mm -hmm. over each one of those segments that reports to a lieutenant. And there are a lot of different eyes and ears that, that uh, are taking place throughout the school system. And um, that's when we partner when an incident, hopefully we'll never have one, but if incidents occurs, and we've had small ones um, where the school resource officers will then partner with the board, work together, get a message out mm -hmm. to all the families, um, of, of the kids and let everyone know what's going on and, and, yeah. and of course we try to get everything out to the media as soon as possible. Sure, yeah. Uh, next thing we want to talk about, uh, we've had a lot of uh, calls to our office um, or even just in general uh, regarding uh, suicide and suicide yeah. attempts. So we, we just kind of want to talk about the avenues that are available to anyone that is um, having a rough time and, and um, contemplating that as an option. And, um, you know, just to let you know that there are people out there 
available to help you as you are going through this rough patch and to let you know that um, there's there's more there's more out there for you. Um, so we just want to remind people that the suicide prevention hotline is uh, 1-800-273-TALK. Again, that's uh, 1-800-273-8255. So if you are someone that is dealing with something and you just need someone to to listen, uh, you need someone to talk to. You know, you can you can call that line. You can call our agency. Call our sheriff's You know, office. give Absolutely. us a call. You know, we we never want to have to. Um, res never want to have to respond when someone has already hit that point and mm -hmm. sees no no other way back through. But um, you know, if you need help now, um, we're here for you. I mean, that's you know, I last year we had 721 calls to the sheriff's office in reference to suicide, and that was either because it occurred, because they were thinking of it, uh, or somebody was worried and wanted an officer to mm -hmm. respond. 721. That is so many people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're a huge military community, and Sheriff Johnson's a huge supporter of the military. So am I, and everybody else at the agency. And, and it is so sad when we see a military member take their life, mm -hmm. and, and anybody for that matter. Okay. It's not just military. No. If, you, if you have that in, a thought in your mind, give us a call. Reach out to somebody. Talk to somebody. Um, Call me, call my own, I don't care. I mean, mm -hmm. you really gotta reach out for somebody and uh, we'll do everything we can to help you out. Right, and, and it's... Um, it's just a, it's, it's a huge number that needs you know, to go and this, and this issue knows no age, mm -hmm. no gender, any type of um, pay raise or anything like mm -hmm. that. I mean, it really can take toll on, on anyone, children, adults, anybody. Yes, so hey, next year, or actually this year we have a Citizens Law Enforcement Academy you're putting on. Let's, yes. before we go to commercial, why don't you go into that real quick. Yeah, so quickly we have that. Um, it is starting up February 28th. It will run every Thursday for nine weeks until April 25th. Um, we're accepting applications, so you wanna get those in very, very quickly so that we can uh, process your application so that we can accept you into the program. Uh, you can get that application on our website, santarosasheriff.org. Fill that out, email that to me, dr drive it over to one of our district offices, they'll fax it to me. Um, it's just a great program and it really gives you an inside look to your Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office to see what we do, meet some of our deputies, meet our canines, and just really get a, a cool inside and hands-on approach mm -hmm. to what we do and how we do it. Let's uh, go to a quick commercial and we'll be back with more in just a second. Why are we here? Because you guys busted me stealing from cars. So how were you getting into these cars? It's easy, man. I just open the doors. W what do you mean, just open the doors? Most of the cars I get into are left unlocked. But what are you looking for when you get into these cars? Cell phones, wallets, guns, purses with money, and even sunglasses. You'd be surprised what people leave in their vehicles. If people would just lock their cars. If people would just lock their cars. From that first day when I started hearing stories about what law enforcement actually, you know, entailed, I was hooked. I'm very involved with, you know, being on the SWAT team. It's my niche, if you will. I take pride in, in, in what I do. And my wife grew up in Santa Rosa County. I have, you know, two children, one on the way. Uh, I, I try to be the best husband and father I can be. Hopefully, at the end of the day, it make me a better cop as well. I am Michael Ramirez, and I am proud to be a Santa Rosa County Deputy Sheriff. And welcome back. You know, Jacqueline, nothing gets me like that. <laughs> little cute little kid kissing his dad. Her dad. Oh, man. It, it, just, it <laughs> killed me. I'm watching that, and I'm like... and, and that Makes you think of just, your daughter. It does. It really yeah. does. And, and that's every day when we go to work, and, mm -hmm. and I just look forward to the coming home and all that other good stuff. But anyhow, let's focus. <laughs> focus. Focus. Uh, wanted fugitives. Let's talk about that. This is our favorite part of the show. Mm -hmm. and uh, Everyone's favorite part of the show. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Let's start off. Uh, you go first. All right. So first we have Olim Olivia Fleming. She's wanted for possession of marijuana with intent to sell, manufacture, deliver, possession of drug equipment. She also has an FTA for battery and domestic violence. She is a white female, 36 years old. Approximately 5'5", 220 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. And next up is Jordan Adam Couch. He's uh, wanted for fraud, illegal use of a credit card. Jordan's a white male, 35 years of age. He's approximately 6 foot tall, 200 pounds. He has brown hair and blue eyes. Kimberly Ann Kaiser, she's wanted for grand theft of a motor vehicle. She is a white female, 35 years old. She's approximately 5'4", and 220 pounds. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. 
And next up is Weldon Renzo Wilson. He, and he has an active warrant for possession of a controlled substance without a prescription, possession and or use of drug equipment. And uh, Weldon is a white male, 28 years of age, about five foot seven tall, 135 pounds. He is bald and brown eyes. All right, next up we have Clinton McDaniel. He is wanted for intimidation, send Britain threat to kill. Clinton is a white male, 39 years old. He's approximately 5'9", 215 pounds, has brown hair and brown eyes. And lastly is Ellery Lamar Laster, and uh, he's wanted for an order revoking bond for fleeing and eluding law enforcement at high speed, knowingly operating while his license is suspended. And Ellery is a black male, 34 years of age, about five foot eight tall, 195 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. So if you know any of these individuals, where they're at and where we can find them, contact the Santa Rosa County Crime Stoppers at 437-STOP, mm -hmm. and you could be eligible for a reward of up to $3,000. You don't, we don't want your name. Mm -mm. We just want to know where they're at, and we'll take it from there. And then if they get caught, contact Crime Stoppers again, you can get your reward. And um, I know what I can do with $3,000. Mm, lots of shoes for me. Okay. <laughs> I'm good with the shoes. All right. Uh, hey, Clea, you mentioned Clea before we get off that Citizens yes. Law Enforcement Academy. How many open positions are there for the classes right we, now? You know, I, I've talked with the sheriff before. He wants to see a, like, full class. So I really don't have a number. I would love to see, you know, in the past we've had upwards of 20 was kind of our largest class. Mm -hmm. I would love to see, um, you know, 30 or 40 in a, in a class. It would be great. So um, if you're interested, we'll make room for you. And it is a really cool class. If you haven't been to that, really, you're looking at how we do things every day it's not we've had some misconception that you're actually taking a law enforcement certification to be right. a law enforcement officer it's not it's it's just to see how we work you get to see a lot of the cool things that happen behind the scenes and uh, you get hands-on with stuff mm -hmm. it's really cool and it has a lot of great benefits too after you complete it we have a lot of people that are interested in riding along with our deputies mm -hmm. um, if you have not completed that class you get to only do that twice a year um, but if you take the class you get to do it up to 12 times a year, or I'm sorry, yes, 24 for, times a to year. To be a ride along. Yeah, right. to do a ride along. And it's, you know, it just gives you a different perspective because you can pick different shifts, you pick, pick different districts um, to ride along. And it just, it gives you a lot more opportunities to, to hang out with our deputies. You know, I challenge anybody that wants to be a law enforcement officer, come on out, do your, do your paperwork, go on our, our website, santarosasheriff.org, under the programs tab, it says ride along, fill out the paperwork. Make sure that you notarize it because that's uh, the big disqualifier. Mm -hmm. And come on out. If, if you want to be a law enforcement officer, even if you're just interested in what we do and how we do it, or just a, a citizen that just wants mm -hmm. to see it, come on behind the scenes. We'll be happy to show you. We could schedule it in your area or wherever you want to go. And uh, it, it's a blast. It really is fun. I get to do it every day when I go to and from work and do traffic stops. And well, and, and same, with, same with Citizen Law Enforcement Academy. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the last two or three classes, we've hired someone yeah, who right. has taken the class um, and, you know, because they they were able to come and they were to, able to see what our agency was about, what our agency does, what we provide to our deputies and the atmosphere to to work with us. And, and they loved it and they applied and they're hired now, working the roads. Awesome. So come on out. Check it out. Next yeah. is uh, office, uh, Sheriff's Office Updates. Yes. So we had Deputy of the Quarter, which is uh, an honor that's instilled upon a deputy in either in different districts, uh, definitely different districts, but also in different units. So yeah. we want to congratulate uh, Deputy Aaron Goff with uh, the Gulf Breeze District, uh, Caleb Waters, who's in court security, Heather Bruce in Milton, and Jeff Appling in Pace. So congratulations for being the uh, Deputy of the Quarter at Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. Um, great pictures, hang in there guys, great mm -hmm. job, proud of you, and keep it up, that's important. Yeah, they did a great job. Next we have- hey, um, You, you wanna do it? <laughs> <laughs> job openings. Job openings, come work for us. Um, I mean, we have a lot of fun on the show, mm -hmm. so I mean, just take this and amplify it to the size of our agency, and that's how much fun we have. And well, you know, good point. We got a lot of fun people that work here. It's a great yeah. place to work. Our atmosphere's family, and uh, it's just a great place to work. No regrets to me. And like they say, if you go somewhere where you don't feel like you're working, you're never really working. Right. And it's a great thing. So openings right now, we have six sworn law enforcement mm -hmm. positions. 
Uh, but before you apply, you do need to go to the police county. Yes. Uh, so we're looking for six, unless you're at another agency, but let's not get into that. <laughs> uh, but come check us out. Uh, we're really competitive on salary. I think we're really high in Northwest Florida. But I, yeah. I'm not we're, to we're, we're doing We're doing really well for ourselves. Yes. And, yeah. And we also have some uh, civilian positions open. So yeah. go to our website under the Careers tab, and you'll see the open positions. You can apply online. And um, check it out. It's SantaRosaSheriff.org. What else you got? Um, well, we wanted to discuss the, the process to apply. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. when you go into our website, it's not just submitting your resume and, and filling out a, a basic application. There, there really is a little bit more of a process to it. There's a, a and it kind of a time. test. It takes time. Yeah, it takes time. So One of the things we, we get a lot of questions is, well, it's been like a couple of weeks. Well, yeah. I mean, we've got background <laughs> investigations to mm -hmm. do. We have to make sure the sworn law enforcement officers have a really clean bill of health as far as your background and uh, physical agility and psychological. I mean, mm -hmm. it, and to be able to get to all those different people, it does take, you know, some time. Mm -hmm. I remember when it, for and me, it took close to like two, three months before I was hired. Mm -hmm. And and same with the civilians. You know, it, it, it there is a process that they have to go through just to see if you're one qualified for the job, but then to thoroughly vet your background. So it, it is a process. Um, and even just to apply, you know, if you do plan on applying with our agency, you know, just set aside some time to um, go through that process because it's not it's not a quick five minute thing um, and there's a reason that we do that. So Before just, we go, let me just mention real quick sure. too. If you're a retired law enforcement officer and you're interested to come to us, we also do that. So we've had some openings in our school resource program mm -hmm. uh, from former school resource officers that may, may have just left an agency and want to come back in, you know what the job's about, come on over and apply. Your standards are still good for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And if you're from out of state, you can apply as well. And that's real easy. You take a two week course, you're good to go. So, um, hey, I hate rambling, but we gotta go. We do. Yeah, so thank you for joining us this time and we'll see you on our next show.